Welcome and Happy New Year. I hope you all enjoyed your holiday break and are back and feel refreshed and renewed and ready to jump into 2017 and make it a great second half of the school year. This week's Wednesday webinar presented by Molly Ashoff is on World Book Web Science and Social Studies Power Modules. These are not brand new modules. We've had them a couple years, but I just want to refresh people's um, minds that they're there and that they can be used. They're really great online modules that students can work through at their own pace. It really fits in well with blended learning especially if you have a device or devices in your room for, t for students to work on. I'm going to mostly be showing you in the science power today, but the, just know that the social studies module looks and works just the same way only with social studies topics. So the first thing we need to go to the ESU 8 website I have that right here. Over here on the side panel is the World Book Web. Button. We'll hit that. And here's the home page to the World Book Web. Right here, um, your school should show up. As long as your kids or you are in school, you won't have to log in. But if they would want to work on this at home or if you want to work on it at home then you would have to log in with the username ESU8WB and the password would be orders. So like I said we're going to look at science and social studies power. Since most of what I'm going to show you is in the science power I'll just quick pull up the social studies power so we can see the topics in there. These two modules are built for upper elementary, they say. So you'd have to look at it and know your students, but I would say anywhere between four and seventh grade could be using these. And the really nice thing is I'll show you that they have a differentiation um, model so that students maybe with a lower learning or lower reading lexile level um, can also be participating, but uh, same concepts, but a little bit easier reading. So here's the social studies power. We've got community and government, parts of the world, people and cultures, cultures, world history, and war and conflict. So that kind of gives you the topics. And then you will see that it works very much the same. Um, these parts of it, the student center, the assessment, how you would set it up as the science center. So we're going to go back into the Science Center and look at that one. All right, the Science Power module um, covers these areas um, or topic areas. And I'm going to click on one, and the I will explain this a little bit more later in the tutorial but I don't think they touch on it enough. So this little triangle with the rainbow, this is where you would go to differentiate a lesson. And each lesson has that. So if I click, click on living things, <clears throat> you see under each one of here, we've got animal behavior, behavior and survival. If I click on one, it shows the lexile level um, and a little bit about what's in the topic of that. Um, section. If you click down, so this was a 670 Lexile. If you click on the rainbow below, you see that it drops the Lexile to 420, but still covering the topic of animal behavior. And so students really wouldn't know the difference. A lot of the activities are the same. It's just the print reading material is at a lower Lexile level. So if you're differentiating within your classroom, you tell your students either to click on the rectangle on animal behavior to do work through the lesson or the rainbow, depending on what that they would need. 
So I really like that feature that's already built in um, to personalize the learning for the students. I'm going to go back here to the front page. Now I've got a little <clears throat> tutorial that we're going to watch <coughs> that really explains all the features within the science power <clears throat> and it's very similar to the socialized power like I said. So right down here under support under the online tutorials and you can go and look at these. We're going to look through the science power one. The student center one <clears throat> would be a great if you decide to do this a great video to have your students watch and kind of follow as they are learning how to use the module because it goes through every step for them that they need um, including how they can um, build their um, profile and everything. So we're going to start right here with Science Power and supplemental science learning site for upper elementary age children. The site is correlated to popular science textbooks as well as state or provincial standards. It includes differentiated content to help struggling readers master the material and features easy to use navigation for young students. Science Power is comprised of lessons across six different units, living things, ecosystems, earth, weather and space, matter, and forces and energy. Click on a unit to view its lesson. You can drop to a particular subunit using the navigation in the left index column. Each lesson appears in a box with a prism icon below it. Mouse over any lesson to get a preview of the content and see its Lexile level. Click on the lesson box to go to a lesson's homepage, or click on the prism below to go to the homepage of the lesson's differentiated version. Every lesson has a podcast of the entire lesson being read aloud, available as an MP3 download, links to curriculum and textbook correlations, an extension activity, an experiment, an explore more page, critical thinking questions, and two quizzes, one on vocabulary and an interactive quiz on lesson content and concepts. The podcast for the lesson contains all the lesson text and has been read aloud by a professional voice actor. It is available in MP3 format and serves as a quick run-through of the lesson content for the teacher and as a study tool for students. The extension activity offers a new challenge to talented students who quickly master the lesson content. Many extension activities will require students to use a chart, map, or graphic organizer to record observed data. The experiment explains or illuminates concepts taught in the lesson text. Each experiment lists the procedure in clear steps and uses items that can be found commonly in the home or at your local store. Some of the experiments also contain videos demonstrating the concepts even further. The Explore More page offers links to related content. This includes a listing of World Book Web related sites, as well as external sites that have been reviewed by World Book's dedicated editorial team. Go to any of the World Book websites by clicking through the navigation that you see in the portlet. Go to the external sites by clicking on Other Websites. All of these links can be used to further the teaching of the lesson. Critical thinking questions invite students to take what they've learned from the lesson and investigate it further. The questions draw on science standards and employ scientific reasoning and inquiry. Often they will direct students to World Book Web articles for further information as a basis of the work. The quizzes for each lesson offer an engaging and fun way of testing students' knowledge of the content it's 10 without the pressure of tracked results. Each lesson has a vocabulary quiz and an interactive visual quiz in a variety of formats. The lesson content itself is multimedia rich and uses Lexile levels to assure the content is tailored to young learners. Click the arrows at the bottom of the screen to navigate through the lesson itself. Introduction It is night on the plains of Africa. Hundreds of zebras are huddled together for protection. 
toggle the voice audio on or off by clicking on the button in the far right corner of the site. Click on the home icon to view all the screens for the lesson at a glance. Select a screen to go directly to it, or click on the home icon again to close the list. You'll notice that the voice audio is still turned off. It will remain that way for the duration of the lesson unless I click it back on. The main idea checks shown at the bottom of each page are intended to give a quick review of what was learned on the page. Click on a button to see the question, then click to get the proper answer. Close out of the window to return to the lesson content. Each lesson also contains a test, which has 10 questions that directly examine the vocabulary and concepts taught in the lesson. The test can be accessed through the finish page following the summary page in each lesson. Students can sign in to take the test and track their own results through the student sign-in located in the upper right navigation of the site. The next few steps depend on the teacher's discretion. If a class has been set up in the teacher center, which we'll discuss next, the student will see this available in the drop-down menu. After selecting the proper class, the student then either will select his or her name from the second drop-down menu, or type it in if student names have not been added to the class. If no classes or student names have been set up, the student can still take the lesson test, but results will not be tracked. Only the final score at the end of the test will be displayed, and the information will not be stored. Manage the test results of classes and their students through the Teacher Center, which can be accessed through the Teacher Center link in the upper right navigation or through the bottom navigation of the site. Create a profile with the relevant information. Here we have already created a profile and will have signed in for demonstration purposes. Next, establish your classes. In My Classes, you can add, edit, or delete your classes. Click View Reports to see all the lessons that your class has taken so far. Click on a class name on the My Classes page to see a list of students. Edit or delete the class, or view classes reports. You can also upload a CSV file of your students or enter them manually. To break down test results by student, choose a class. Then click on a student to see his or her individual test results. In a student's test results pages, the tests that the student has taken will be displayed by lesson. Questions that the student has missed appear in red and are marked with an X. Mouse over any question number to see an overlay appear with the question and the correct answer. Sort the information by lesson title, score, or date taken. Click on the lesson link to go to that lesson's homepage. Now let's view reports. Click on My Reports to see all the tests taken for each of your classes. Select the lesson to see which students have taken the test, their scores, and the cumulative class score. Here you can see which questions your students are answering correctly and which they are missing. These results also will be shown as cumulative scores at the bottom of the report. You also can see an individual student's work by clicking on his or her name. This will take you to a page where you can see all the tests that student has taken, including all his or her results. The Teacher Center also contains links to the curriculum and textbook correlations for the site. For curriculum correlations, simply choose your grade level and your state or province, then see the standard test results returned after clicking Go. For textbook correlations, select by book title or cover to view all the content to which science power is correlated. You'll also find teacher's guides and student study guides available in the Teacher Center. These are available as downloadable Word documents and are intended to give the teacher a quick glance at the lesson content before teaching the lesson and to help students study for the site test or the class test that the teacher has prepared. In addition to the lesson and test content, the site features a news feed that refreshes periodically throughout the day. It 
It also has a biography section titled Featured Scientist. A new scientist will appear every time the page is reloaded. Use the navigation arrows to get a quick glimpse of a scientist's biography. Click on a biography of interest to read the extended text. All biographies are written to the appropriate grade level and feature a photo or illustration of the scientist. You can also select a new scientist through the left-hand navigation. Science Power also has an exciting new feature called Ask a Scientist. View one of numerous videos that answer questions from students around the world, answered by one of our many panel experts. Mouse over the video to see the question being addressed. Click to play this video or click More Ask a Scientist to go to a page listing all the videos for the site. You can also submit your own questions through the Ask a Question button in the right-hand corner of the page. Finally, the site also offers graphic organizers that are available as a PDF downloadable document. These graphic organizers can be used as seen fit to teach the lesson concepts, aid in scientific investigation, or serve as a launch pad for students to create their own experiments and activities. Click, download, and print. It's that easy. The graphic organizers are available in the Science Lab section off the homepage and in the Teacher Center. Science Power represents a thoughtful entry into digital classroom learning using a broad range of media, text, and content that was designed to engage young minds and assist the quest for learning. Okay, great. I hope that gave you an overall um, look at what you can do. If you look on those online tutorials, there's also a teacher center and assessments. It's really great um, if you think you're going to do this to watch that. It shows you how to set up your classes. You can import your students with a CSV file or you can set up the class and then the students can log in. The one thing is really nice that when the students start a profile or to log into your class, they don't need an email. So if you don't have emails for your younger students, that's okay. They just log in with their name and they make a username and password. And so that's really, really nice about this. The social studies module works very much the same. It has a lot of the same features when you go through it. I would encourage you to spend some time looking at this and deciding how it can be used in your class. And if you need any help, please don't hesitate to contact myself, Molly Ashoff here at ESU 8. And I'd be happy to sit down and help you set up your classes, um, talk about how you can incorporate this into maybe a center into your classroom. But I think it would be a really great added online learning component that you could put into your classrooms in the new year. Now, if you've maybe covered some of these things, they wouldn't have to do them all. They could just pick and choose a topic to, to um, go through the module. Once again, any questions, please let me know, and I'm happy to help you, and I hope you have a really, really dynamic 2017.